In today's video, we're going to learn the classic tune, The Brown Haired Maiden. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. There's a link in the description below to the PDF document I have here, so go, download the document, put it on a tablet, print it out, have it in front of you so you can follow along. Ah, The Brown Haired Maiden, one of the classic tunes for the Highland Pipes, and with good reason. It's a great melody, it's not overly complicated, and as we've done with a previous tune, Koroholi's 43rd Welcome to the Northern Meeting, we're going to use the concept of phrases to learn this particular tune. There are five-ish phrases in The Brown Haired Maiden. We have phrase one, we have phrase 2A that's going to occur in the first part, and then we have phrase 2B that's going to occur in the second part. They have different pickup notes, but the rest of the phrase is the same. So I think approaching them as completely different phrases is not useful. So we're going to have phrase 2A, phrase 2B, then phrase 3, phrase 4, and phrase 5. And phrase 5 is very similar to phrase 3. Um, just a little bit, the downbeat of the first measure is different. The rest of the phrase is the same. But this one is just different enough, and it's kind of in the middle. We're going to go ahead and label those ones differently. But in any case, we have five phrases in the Brown Haired Maiden. Now, this is building on a lot of concepts that we've been looking at. If you notice, this is episode 25 of the basic series here. So if some of this is new to you and you haven't done it, um, go back through the playlist and there'll be a link to the entire playlist of the basics up here. Uh, but we're going to be dealing with light D throws. We're going to be dealing with burls. We're going to be dealing with changing notes with the high A grace note. We're going to be dealing with doublings. There's a lot of things going on in this. So make sure that you understand how to do all of these things. Now, we'll be discussing them as we approach the tune, but if you want more in-depth instruction, there are videos on each and every one of the technical concepts we'll be going over today in this tune. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's dive right into phrase one of the brown-haired maiden. Now, the first time through, I am not going to be using a metronome. Uh, I want to make sure that we're getting the right notes, the right embellishments, that they're being played cleanly and clearly. And once we have that, then I'll worry about getting it in proper time. But to start, we're going to be on a low A, go up to D on the downbeat with a D throw, a light D throw in particular for this tune at this level. If you are already playing a heavy D throw, by all means, go ahead and play that one. But for the purposes of the basic series here, we haven't covered that one yet. So... And that's a dotted note, so we are going to hold it. So while we're not worrying about the metronome quite yet, we do want to kind of give it some approximate timings. So long notes I want held longer than the short notes. So after that D throw, we're going to a 16th note C, which is a pretty short C. Then a G grace note to a B, low G catch to A. Let's do just that much right now. And on that low G catch, we want to make sure we're really kind of hearing it. And in that D throw, establishing a nice solid low G at the top of the embellishment so that we have a place to kind of jump off from. So we'll go up again to a D with a D throw, again, making sure we hear the low G. That might prove a little bit more troublesome than it might otherwise because we did just come down to a low A with a low G grace note just before it. So you'll do a low G to an A, right back to a low G starting that light D throw. That's on a quarter note, so it's a nice long note. And then an E grace note down, that guy right there, to a low A. Let's try the whole phrase. And just like that, you have phrase one. Let's go ahead and try it now with the metronome. We have the metronome set at 60 beats per minute right now. I think that's a good starting speed for this particular tune, but you pick a speed that works for you. This is counting the quarter notes, so we're gonna be coming in on the upbeat, the and of the beat. And if you need help counting rhythms, I do have a video linked. I think it's over in that corner, actually, and in the description below so that you can get the timing under control on this video. In any case, we're gonna be starting between the beats, coming down into that low G, and then boom, up to, the D in the D throw on the beat. And just like that, we have phrase one. So let's keep on going and take a look at phrase two. 
Phrase two is interesting. It starts with a light D throw, and that's not unusual. What is a little unusual is that in this case, it's on a 16th note. So it's a very short note to begin with. So when we play that D throw, we're gonna land on that D, and we're pretty much gonna immediately do the G grace note taking us to the F for the downbeat of the next bar. Instead of kind of waiting on the D like we so often do, this time again, we're gonna be just kind of rolling all the way up to that G grace note to F. And G grace note to F again, one of the somewhat tricky ones if you haven't approached it yet, because from D to F, if you're going to finger it properly to do the note change, there's a moment in time where you have to let go of everything. So here, remember, we're gonna to want to keep our pinky down a little bit longer, and I go into this in the Amazing Grace video a little bit more. But in any case, we are going to lift the top three and then switch down to F. So make sure you can do that motion before worrying about sticking it in to the tune here. So we're on the F, down to D, and then we have the high G doubling. Again, I'd prefer it was called a high G throw, but it is what it is. It's a G and F to a G. Boom, da da da. Then we go to an F, and then here we're going to play an F doubling, which from F is relatively straightforward. It's just gonna be two more G grace notes on the F. Make sure that each of the G grace notes here is nice and crispy and small. Then we're switching just down to a D and tapping out an A. And remember, A is easy to tap out because if your bottom hand is in the correct position, it's just one finger. It's not a low G, it's an A. Let's try the whole phrase in some approximate timing here. No metronome yet. Now, let's stick it in with that metronome. We want that first G grace note of the F doubling right on the click of that metronome. The second G grace note happens after the click, and we wanna make sure we're tapping that A between the two E's on the next click of that metronome. Let's try these two phrases together because in this case, before we go into phrase three, I wanna kinda of look at line one, and I want to really take a look at that bit right there where we're coming off of that dotted A into that cut D with a D throw G grace note up to F and see how it all works with the metronome. So that's a little bit tricky, but it's kind of fun too. So with that, let's move on to phrase three. Phrase three starts with a high G doubling, the G, F, G. Then we're gonna do an A grace note to an F. And remember on that A grace note, the ring finger's not coming down. It's not a true high A, it's an A grace note. So it's a single finger motion with the thumb in this case, thumb off, both down to an F, but it's a short F. So we're gonna get to that F and then switch up to that high A and hold that high A across. Then from here, we have what is known as a half doubling. Kind of a weird name, I know, but from A to the F, there is not the possibility of a lifted G grace note. So we're gonna go straight from that high A to the first F in the doubling. That's gonna be right on the beat. And then we'll do just a single G grace note after that to get to the second F. Then from there, we'll raise up to a high A. And for the first time in the wild in my series here, we have a burl from high A. So from high A, we'll come down, sweep up, sweep down, or if you're doing the seven, come down, sweep down, and curl back. Or if you're doing a tap curl, from high A, down, tap, and curl. Whatever burl you're doing, that's where you're gonna be. You want that first A to be on the beat, and we do want it to be audible. That said, we don't want it to be too long. Bum, da-da-da, and not bum, da-da-da, bum, da-da-da. Let's try this without the metronome the first time. And now with the metronome. All right, let's go to phrase four so we can finish up this first part. So this is gonna start with a light D throw on a dotted eighth. So we're gonna hold it a little bit, switch up to the E, avoid a crossing noise there. Make sure that we're getting the ring finger out of the way before these three come down. Then we're gonna do a G grace note to F. So again, both up, one finger down. Then we're gonna do a high G doubling, again a GFG. Then an E to a light D throw, and then a heavy D strike this time. So that's G grace note on D, that G grace note taking to the D right on the beat, and then the 
heavy D strike in this case, a low G will separate this. <laughs> Now let's try with the metronome. Now let's try phrases three and four together. Remembering phrase three starts with the pickup note at the end of the line if you're not looking at the individual phrases. So a bit of a pickup there. You can see it over here in that phrase. In any case, phrases three and four with the metronome. So that's the first part. Let's try the entirety of the first part with the metronome at 60 beats per minute. So now as we look at the second part here, we have phrase three yet again, same exact phrase. Then we have phrase two B. So rather than the D throw taking just up to the F, now we're gonna do a D throw on the downbeat and then go to an E before doing the G grace note to an F. Once we're on that F, however, the rest of the phrase is the same. Let's try phrase two B with the metronome. We already know how to play phrase three, so let's go ahead, dive straight into line three of this tune, phrase three and phrase two B. So let's take a look at phrase five and start finishing this tune up. It's not an overly complicated melody. So for phrase five, we're gonna still come in with a high G doubling, but now we're going straight to a high A. There's no sweep or anything else, just a clear open high A on a dotted note, walking down through a short high G into a half F doubling, this time from a G rather than a high A. But from G, we're just gonna come down and play a single G grace note to separate the F into a second F, high A, down into that burl. And with the metronome, To talk briefly again about the first second ending, we're gonna start on line three at that forward repeat, play all of line three, and then go to the first ending, which in this case is line four, play through. You can see the repeat sign here that's taking us back to the start of line three. We'll play all of line three again. Now we'll skip that first ending, head down to line five, the last line of the tune, and play that. So let's put this into action. The second part of the brown haired maiden. So there's the brown haired maiden, relatively straightforward. Now let's just try playing the whole tune all together, 60 beats per minute.
Yeah, you heard a little bit of blow-by. I'm recording this after quite a long practice session earlier today, so maybe film before practice, Matt. In any case, there you go. The brown-haired maiden, great melody. It's adding to your overall repertoire. So at this point, if you're following my basic series, you should have the tunes of Pipe Sergeant Peter Bailey, Hyra de Gerlach, Amazing Grace, Core Holy's Welcome, and now The Brown-Haired Maiden for five tunes. So at this point, if it fits within your budget, I really recommend getting into a set of mouth-blown practice pipes. So that'll be my next video about making the transition to those. But first things first, you gotta get all five of these memorized. So Pipe Sergeant Peter Bailey, Hyra de Gerlach, Amazing Grace, Core Holy's Welcome, and The Brown-Haired Maiden. It's not too much, I know you can do it. Get these memorized, played with the metronome, played accurately, good and clean. And when you can do that, you can reward yourself with well, the first thing you're going to be able to blow and squeeze on, not just uh, a stick. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of the video, think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified of when I post new videos. I also have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way to helping support the channel. You'll see names of folks scrolling up right now. These are people that contribute every month to the channel. I really appreciate it. I'd love to add your name to this list. There's often early access to videos and other perks, so head over to my Patreon and check it out. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see here and we'll get you going. I work with folks from all over the planet and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise with t-shirts and hats, mugs, other things. Go get yourself some bagpipe merchandise and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. All right, everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper and until next time, cheers. Cheers.